Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. You know, it's getting to where I can't even read the news anymore. I stopped watching the news because it's just 24-7 fear-mongering and divisive garbage and I didn't need to hear it anymore. It was just making my life worse. So I stopped watching the news on TV. If I get any news now, I read it. That way it's easier to seek out my source and I can stop reading when I want to and I can focus on the parts I want to focus on. I'm not being uh, having it shoved down my throat. But even reading the news nowadays sometimes is very frustrating. Uh, I was reading the news articles today, or at least skimming through the headlines. Uh, one of the headlines that really irritated me was, Oh, man's First Amendment rights violated because employer fires him after a racist rant on the internet. That's not a violation of someone's First Amendment. That's private business's right to do that. If you do something like that, like if one of my waiters turned out to be a neo-Nazi or an Antifa member, it'd be bye-bye Hans or, you know, Shane, whichever one your name was, uh, because I don't want you associated with my business. It's not a violation of the First Amendment, period. The, vi the First Amendment in no way says you're free from the consequences of your action, no matter what you say. It just says the government won't stop you from saying what you're going to say. Your neighbor might punch you in the face for it. Uh, different thing. Uh, the other thing I saw, though, that got me angry and what this video is supposed to be about, if I could focus... You know, I need some ADHD medication or something, I think, sometimes. But if I would focus here, the thing that irritated me was an article I saw entitled The Myth of the Responsible Gun Owner. They were basically making the point that this whole idea that most people who own guns are responsible is garbage because, you know, every year, hundreds, if not thousands of people do horrible things with guns. Every year. They make bad decisions, like that guy that shot the kid that rang his doorbell. You know, those kind of people do that kind of thing. Every year, that shows that this whole myth of responsible gun owners is not a real thing. This, You know, the idea that most gun owners are responsible. Well, first off, there are millions of gun owners. So when you're talking what hundreds of people do, that's ridiculous. And to try to push what they do or the responsibility for what this tiny little percentage does onto a, an enormous hole, that's completely ridiculous. That's like saying, oh, I went to Disneyland and it was horrible because one of the flowers in the flower bed out front had wilted. So the whole place was garbage, even though everything else was perfect, but that flower, that ruined everything. That's kind of that kind of thinking. Because like I said, there's millions of gun owners. Also, you're not taking into account that every year, uh, not hundreds, but hundreds of thousands of people in this country do heinous things that don't involve guns, and they don't own guns. So even when you look at the number of people doing heinous things, hurting people, killing people, etc., drunk driving and killing seven or eight people at a time, guns are involved in only a small fraction of that. People who own guns are only involved in a small fraction of that, because the people who own guns, like I say, 99 point something percent of them are good, responsible, law-abiding citizens. And I'm not saying everybody's perfect that owns guns. Uh, I just had an incident the other day where my West Virginia slipped out for a while and I went full redneck mode because someone tried to run us off the road. Well, they didn't try. They ran us off the road because we tried to pass them in a passing zone on a road that they were doing 20 miles under the speed limit because they were pulling a horse trailer. And they apparently don't like to get passed because they decided it was worth risking our lives for. And they ran us off the road. Luckily, I was in an all-wheel drive car. And I've got, you know, four decades of experience driving on back roads and gravel. So I was able to recover. If it had been my son, he might have died there. So I was pissed. And it turned out they live right down the street from me. So we had words. And it got heated at some points. There were some mistakes made. Mistakes on their part, mistakes on my part. You know, it brings up that whole thing of, oh, if you've got a gun, are you obligated to run away if someone's being a dick? That's a different topic, but you know, it brings that up. And maybe we'll talk about it in our live chat tonight. But uh, if you came to my live chat the other night, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was pretty heated. It was pretty bad. Uh, like I said, mistakes were made on all sides. And, and I kind of thought I might be going to jail at one point. But like I said, different story there. But here's the moral I kind of took from that, uh, other than fuck around and find out for them. But uh, I took the moral from the story. The moral I took from this story is that even though we were both 
armed. Turns out we were both armed. Uh, before the cops got there, we had plenty of time. It took 45 minutes for the police to get there on a vehicular assault call. So it tells you the police aren't going to solve your problems, not going to prevent your problems from happening. So like I said, we had plenty of time to interact with one another. And during that time, we both found out. Well, I found out he was armed. I don't think he ever knew I was armed. Uh, I told him at one point, you shouldn't storm up to people's cars because what if I'd have had a gun in my lap and I'd have took you as a threat and put a bullet in your face. Uh, but uh, uh, that was after he'd already pulled his gun out of his waistband, showed it to me and sat it on the front seat of his car. Like I said, mistake. Uh, but I understand that mistake because I've made a similar one before. Uh, but still... Like I said, that's not my point. That's not what I'm making here. Uh, the point I'm making is that it got heated. We were both armed. Like I said, I don't think he knew I was armed. They made fun of my fanny pack, which is where my gun was. And I think the whole time I was like, mm, yeah, go ahead and make fun of my fanny pack. Let's see what you think of it later if, if it ever comes to that. Uh, but uh, yeah, they made fun of my fanny pack. They made fun of my shoes, my tie-dye Crocs that I like so much. Uh, they accused me of being someone who sucks dick for money which you don't know how hard it was for me at that point right there to not say, well, why? How much money do you got? You know, but I didn't think that was appropriate at the moment. Uh, but like I said, a lot of things happened, a lot of anger, some physicality even, both of us armed, nobody got shot. No one, neither of us ever decided to pull the trigger when it wasn't justified. Didn't happen. Could have easily happened in those 45 minutes. Could have happened when he was storming up on the car. Could have went out, happened when I got out of the car and told him if my son had been in my car when he did that, I'd be, you know, yanking a knot in his tail right now. Could have happened any time during that. But it didn't because we were both, to one degree or another, responsible. I mean, I wouldn't call him a responsible driver or someone who made great decisions. But when it came down to it, he didn't want to pull the trigger on somebody. He didn't want to end a life. He didn't want to hurt anyone. It's kind of like that whole thing when people say, oh, well, you're an atheist. You don't believe in religion. So what? You know, if you, people who don't have religion, they, they'll just rape and kill everybody they want if it wasn't for religion. I'm like, you know, you're right. I do rape and kill everybody I want because I don't want to rape or kill anybody. And I don't need religion for that. I think that's true of most people. No, nope, most people don't want to harm anybody. Same thing with most people who own guns. Because like I said, here was a situation where two very angry gun owners had a confrontation, no one got shot. And I think that's the typical thing right there. That's more typical than the stuff you see on the news because they siphon through or, or shift through everything, you know, uh, sort through everything to find the worst examples they can find of society and bring those to you. You know, they don't pay attention to the fact that most people don't do heinous things, even if they get involved in fights, a fist fight even. You know, like there's people getting heated debates and fights and even physical altercations at PTA meetings, school board meetings, city council meetings. You know, even though they don't have guns, they don't step outside five minutes later, get in their car and run each other over. They don't go outside, get a can of gasoline and pour it in the doorway and light it on fire. Because even though they don't like each other and they're having conflict, they still have a center a center of basic goodness to them where they don't want to actually harm someone or they don't want to go to jail, one or the other. Both of those things keep them, you know, from being too bad of a person. And I think that's the norm. So the idea that, oh, the responsible gun owner is a myth. No, it's not. The vast majority of gun owners are fine people who don't make ridiculous decisions. And every time they try to find someone that made a bad decision with a gun, like that old man that shot the kid who rang his doorbell. For every time they find something like that and promote it to hell, there's a hundred incidences where someone jumped out of the bushes and bashed someone's head in with a pipe. But they don't cover that. They don't go around going, oh, responsible pipe owners don't exist. It's a myth. They ignore all that because it's an agenda. They're not worried about being statistically accurate in these articles because like I said, the math I talked about at the beginning, it's a tiny percentage of gun owners that do anything wrong and it's a tiny percentage of the people that do anything wrong that have a gun. So mathematically, their point is stupid. They're not worried about being mathematically correct. They're not worried about even being honest. They're worried about pushing an agenda. And like I said, it irritates me because down deep, I don't like most people. I think most people are dumb as fucking rocks. And I'd rather not hang around with them. 
My sister the other day said something about, oh, mom and Jim don't go anywhere. They need to start getting out more and, you know, do stuff with friends. I'm like, why? That sounds like an awful lot of work to do to be around people. I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, but like I said, that's another story. I, just, I keep getting off track here. Uh, I don't like, like I was saying, I don't like most people. I think they're stupid, but I think most people are good. Like I always say, if you have a hundred people and you stand one of them at a time next to a river and you throw a puppy in the river or a kitten, 99 of them are going to jump in and try to save that puppy, even if they know it's cold or they're going to might ground. They'll still do it. Now, would I trust any of those people to do my taxes? I don't, probably not. But I still think they're probably going to be a good person that does the right thing. And that's the way it is with guns. Most people who own them are responsible enough. They're good enough. They don't do crazy things. They don't make bad decisions. Even when they're in situations where they're making bad decisions, they don't take it to the extreme of making an extremely bad decision because they do have, like I said, that, you know, relative good nature to them. I think that's most people. So when the media tries to tell you people who have guns are bad and guns are bad, it's just not true. It's just an agenda that they want to force on you because the government wants to disarm all of us. All right, everybody, that's it for me today. Before I go, I want to thank everyone yesterday who went over and bought a All Nine Lives Matter shirt because it's the most successful shirt we've ever sold. Uh, we sold over a dozen of those things. And like I said, I know that's not a lot, but that's a lot for me. So I want to thank everyone who participated in that. You're helping fund TYM Triple P. Uh, so I appreciate it. I just want to let everyone know that. Uh, also, the people who go over and buy anything, I appreciate it. Even if you join the 40s Club to get on the scroll later, or you just get some general channel merch over at tympistolproject.com. There'll be a link later in this video at the very end here after I finish speaking. But I just want to say thanks to everyone that participated. Like I said, I didn't know that would be my most successful shirt. Maisie will be happy since she started the movement. You know, Maisie wants a Mercedes just like anybody else, you know, like the founders of other of these types of movements. So so, uh, but that's not what it's going to be used for. She don't need a Mercedes. She doesn't even go anywhere. She never leaves the house. Uh, so the money will go to TY and Triple P. But like I said, want to say thank you. I appreciate it. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Until then, remember, always carry and stay safe until I see you again. Mm -hmm.